Do you need some tasty motion graphics to spice up your next project? Well, let's cook it up. One of the things I really like about this one is it's completely flexible. You can change things and all of your text box elements will update. You could even use multiple lines. And if I want to add some spacing the quick way, I could just add a space or two before and after the longer line, or I could do it more elegantly by going into the settings. We could extend horizontal or we could extend vertical if we need to, but we're going to see how to do all that later. And to get started, we'll go to the edit page, right click in your media pool, go to new fusion composition, hit create. You could double click that fusion comp to dive into the fusion tab. I've got one already started, so I'm going to work from that and I'll click and drag to drop a text node in here. I'm using a free font from defont.com. It's called Retro, Retro Stereo Wide. Let's type in text box, press one, so we could preview this. And I need to press this button up here so I could view two viewers. And I need to click off this because I don't need to see those stats. Bigger size, perfect. So the big trick here is I want a text box on this text, but not exactly. And this is what I mean. I want to go to shading, click on four, and I want to have this type of look, but I want to have this on a separate object so I can style it separately and make it look interesting. I'm going to turn this off for now. And what I'm going to do is make an instance of this text. So I'm going to select the text, copy it, control C, and I'm going to do a control V, but I'm also going to hold on shift, control shift V. I've pasted this text. I probably do want to merge this, but not quite yet. So I'm going to delete that merge. And now I've got an instance. You know, you got an instance because you've got this green line. It's not connected to any of the in and outs. It always stays between these two objects. And you can see the green highlighted input fields are the fields that are connected between the two text nodes. And also while I'm at it, I should select my original text node and press F2 and call this main text. So now I want to select my instance text one. And with my instance text selected, I want to click on the shading tab, go to number four, where I could turn on the background and click on enable. And notice when I click back onto my main text, it also has this blue border enabled. You're seeing how instancing works. And even though this checkbox here doesn't have a green instancing indication, you could still right click on it and choose de-instance. Now, if I come to my main text and uncheck that and go back to my instance, this one is checked. So I've broken the connection between these two. That's exactly what we want. So with my instance text selected, I'm going to press two on the keyboard so I could preview that in the second viewer. With instance text selected in our shading tab up here and with number four clicked on, we don't want to have this space here. So in this setting under level, we could change this to line. And if you like your text boxes to be boxy, then you could leave this as is. But if you like to round things out here, you could adjust this rounding. I just bring it up here so I got this pill shape. So our main text just has text, but our instance text has text and a background. So let's make it so it just has a background. To do that, we select number one up here and find opacity and bring that down. Now you'll see these are connected. So we got to make sure we disconnect that first. Right click and go to de instance. Second time's a charm. Now we want to take our main text and knock them out of the box, Rick, by connecting these two together. And we get this merge in the merge. I want to change the operator to Zor and press two to preview our merge. Okay. So we got this knockout look. And so that my eyes don't go across, I'm going to change the color here, selecting instance text one. I'm going to go to under shading number four and click this drop down and give myself a gray color. And also going to click on these three dots and uncheck checker underlay. With this merge selected, I'm going to press shift space bar and type drop. And we got drop shadow, hit return or enter. And for this, I want to give it a color. So I'm going to click that drop down, pick a color. And with it selected, let's press two to preview it. All right, that's a little bit bright. And for the angle, now I want it to go straight down. So I'll rotate this around till it looks straight down and I see, all right, probably needs to be 90 degrees. We could decrease the blur and adjust the distance. 
Okay, that looks good. And just as a sneak peek for what's going on, I could click on these three dots, go to checker underlay, and you could see we do have some transparency going on. I'm gonna turn it back off for now. Now we could get a little variety by basically making a copy of this gray pill shape, but without the letters cut out of it and give it a different color. So let's make another instance. I will select this one, control C with it selected, control shift V. I'll delete that merge. And with this selected, we could press one and preview that. And let's give it a different color. But before we do that, it's a good idea to name these things so it doesn't get out of hand. So selecting this one, pressing F2, we'll call this text box. And with this one selected F2, text fill one. Okay, so for text fill one, let's go to shading. Let's drop down our color and try to change that. And you'll see we've got an issue because these are connected. So undo. We can't right click on this color to de-instance, but we can click on any one of these values. And once you right click, you'll see de-instance and that'll de-instance the individual color, but you could de-instance color group here. And the green has gone away. So these are all able to be edited individually. Now we could merge this into our drop shadow by clicking on its output and putting that to the drop shadow output. We've got this merge here. Let's preview it by pressing two. And we got to flip that order. So clicking on it, pressing control T flips it. The inside text looks white, which is a, a bit of a mystery. I don't know. Maybe it's mixing with the drop shadow or something. This is, let's adjust this color here. Okay. So more saturation works. So let's click on this merge and press one to preview it. I'm also going to click on the three dots, uncheck check or underlay. I'm going to use the free Crocodove plugin from Reactor. And with that, I'm going to make sure everything is deselected. Hold down shift and press spacebar. Lines, enter. Now I'm going to connect the merge output into the mask of this lines here and press one to preview that. That's what we got, but let's make it look better. So I'm going to go to options, set this number of lines to one. First lines, adjust the spacing, adjust the thickness. I'm going to take the softness down. I'm going to give it a bit of an angle and increase thickness width, make some adjustments there. Spacing, I'm gonna bring this dot length, I'm gonna bring this down, dot spacing, I'm gonna bring that down, length, increase width, and maybe come back up here. We got something. Let's now take our lines and merge it onto our merge by dragging the output to the output. And with our new merge, let's press two to preview that. Now the color isn't great, so what I'm gonna do is go back to lines, Click on the eyedropper and drag it over our red color. Uh, that looks okay. I think we could blend it in a little bit better by making it darker. All right. And maybe I'll come back into some of these settings for my lines to make it look better. All right. So I think that's working better. Now, if we come back to our instance text one and we go to the layout section and we move it, everything is moving together. So let's, let's not do that. Right click, go to de instance. So now this is moving separately. And I also, I want to mask out this text here. I want to mask it to the gray. So let's take the output here, drag it to the blue mask of our main text. And now let's click on our main text and go to layout, go to center and move it. So that's nice. Going to text fill in its layout section, let's also right click go to D instance. Let's also mask it to the gray shape. So take the output of this one here, drag it to the blue mask here. And now let's take our fill and move it. So we get this look, we could animate along with the text. So that gives a lot of flexibility. Let's now go to our main text and just to check to see how things are working. So one, two, three. All right. It is updating. It looks like that is working. How about a second line? Okay, so that's something and something you might not want. So let's go to instance and go to the shading tab, clicking on number four. It's always something, isn't it? So line, let's set this to text. Okay, so now our box fits the entire text. And going back to main text, obviously your results will vary depending on the text that you choose. So you just might need to make some minor adjustments here and there. And remember, if you need extra spacing, go to this instance text here and go to the shading tab, number 
or extend horizontal. Maybe you just want this to go all the way across the screen or have some animated effect. Extend vertical does pretty much what you would expect it to do. If you go back into the drop shadow and start adjusting blur and the shadow strength, you can get some different looks. And hey, look at that. We're almost up to our media out. It's like it's a sign or something.